As it turns out, the tortoise is not faster than the hare. Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, Alabama got a big win that lasted into the uh, the witching hour last night over the Maryland Terrapins, defeating them by 22 points, despite the fact that Maryland tried their best to four corners us into complete boredom. <laughs> you know, this is how good this team is. I think it's almost like a game plan that a lot of our opponents share, like in conferences with each other on the phone. Like, how do you, you know, how'd you play Alabama? How do you beat Alabama? And they've come up with this idea that the best way to beat Alabama is control tempo, slow it down, make it a physical slug fest in the lane, ugly it up as possible. And that, and it seems like everybody tries this and, has it worked? I would say it sort of worked for Oklahoma, sort of worked for Tennessee up in Knoxville, uh, sort of worked for AM and College Station, but it's also not worked about 15 to 18 other times, if not 20 times. Other teams have tried it. Maryland certainly did. San Diego State, that, that's going to look real similar too. Uh, but it's how versatile this Alabama team is, how deep they are. It's how many weapons they have. It's not just Brandon Miller. We talk about that all the time. Jamarch Quinterly just continues to be one of the nation's best college basketball players in the month of March. He's done it again. Uh, I tell you what, Luke, they, they looked really good and played really well. And what's so scary is it, it, it's, it still feels like, and tell me if you think this is wrong, it still feels like Alabama's not hitting on all – Cylinders. This is just how we can get to fire at the same time. Uh, I think there's a lot more gas in this tank, and I'm real eager to see Alabama play their very best game. Maybe that's what it will take to beat San Diego State on Friday. The Aztecs, I believe they are. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, today, So San Diego State is in Louisville. Uh, Alabama from Tuscaloosa is in Louisville. Creighton from Omaha or Baylor from Waco will be in Louisville, uh, and Princeton, New Jersey will be in Louisville. All those locations, Waco, Omaha, Tuscaloosa, San Diego, Princeton, and even Louisville, sound like a, a place a traveling salesman for umbrellas has to tell his wife he's going this week. Like, maybe I got a big week. I got to go to Tuscaloosa, then to San Diego, then to Waco, then Omaha, then Princeton. You know, um, it's not exactly – I love Alabama as much as anybody, but it's not exactly the sexiest, biggest name uh, Sweet 16 grouping that there's ever been, uh, no matter who wins between Baylor and, and Creighton. But that I was going to say I didn't have Princeton in Louisville on my bingo card, but that's such a ridiculous thing to say when really what, they, what we all have are brackets. I didn't yeah. have Princeton in my bracket. Yeah, I, no, I totally, totally agree. He um, – I, I didn't see that either when it comes to Princeton. And I really thought Missouri was going to beat them. I mean, I, I, we want to talk about Alabama, but boy, Missouri just took it to them. Uh, and I'll tell you, this is, this is a rant for another day, but this is why I'm so for reseeding when you get to the sweet 16, because Alabama should be playing Princeton, not San Diego state that it should be San Diego state taking on um, Baylor or uh, Creighton and Alabama as the one seed should get the benefit of playing the lower seeded team. That's I know it screws up everybody's bracket to do that, but that's just something I've always thought would be a good thing. And as my connection seems to be faltering a little bit, I'm just gonna walk out here a little bit. And see oh, cool. if that, how's that? Cool. Getting a quick okay. getting, getting a cool tour of it. So this is my place. Casa de Robinson. That's what I'm gonna call it. Casa de Robinson. <laughs> uh by the way, Josh from Birmingham, um he came up to me at the SEC title game. I told you uh, he said, Hey, I love the podcast. I forgot his name last time I gave him a shout out, which I don't know if you can give somebody a shout out if you don't know their name. I tried okay. and, but he came up to me last night and said, um, he said, Hey, you gave me a shout out, but 
you didn't know my name. I'm Josh. And I was like, Josh, who he goes, just go with Josh in Birmingham. I don't think he wants people to know he listens to us. <laughs> that, but, does uh, sound like, that does sound like one of our fans. It I does listen, sound like. I do listen to your show, but please do not tell anyone that I do. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I got a ticket last night late. And um, at halftime of the Auburn game, I scurried over to the BJCC. Uh, great crowd, a lot of fun. Um, just a, a, a cool scene. Everything was great. Um, really and thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, JQ just doing his thing. I mean, look, this guy, I need to look it up. When you go on a rant here in a second, I'm going to look this up. Yep. I'm going to look up where JQ is going, is, is at, in terms of all time leading scores at Alabama. And everybody's like, oh, Luke, you're crazy. He's been at Alabama longer than Clay Whitehurst was at Alabama. And he can still come back for another year. I'm not saying solid, solid 80s joke. I'm going to call that. We're now the that 80s show. He's not going to um, outscore Jerry Harper, but he could get in the top 15, I think. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like he's been in Alabama long enough where he could get in the top 15. Regardless, he played a heck of a ball game. And man, that swagger is so back for him. And I thought Kevin Willard from Maryland really uh, heaped a lot of praise on him. Said, "Look, I just love watching him." He said, "I watched his high school highlight tape more than just about anybody's." Wow, that's interesting. Uh, JQ was a national elite prospect, uh, recruited all over the country, and uh, so a lot of coaches know him and know of him. He is fun to watch, uh, especially when he's playing with a ton of confidence like he is right now. It's a good thing he, he's definitely one that is firing on all cylinders. JQ's playing great. I thought Brandon Miller played. A fantastic game considering we all know he's not a hundred percent yet we saw the the flashes the talent Betty Ako's playing the best basketball of his career uh and I think Sears is getting there he's getting there uh if we could get Sears Clowney Griffin uh get get all three of those guys playing their best basketball then just watch out but uh no San Diego State's going to be a fun challenge on Friday night. This is what I'm going to do this this week, Luke. A preview for for those of you who uh, who read Bam Insider in addition to the show. I, I'm going to put together a ranking that may interest you. I'm going to rank all of Alabama's Sweet 16 performances. Like every time Alabama's been to the Sweet 16, this is the best game that that Alabama played. And and what's interesting here is Luke, there's only one win. There's yeah. only one win. Alabama's only won one time. That's a uh, spoiler alert. That's going to rank at the top the the, the win uh, over Syracuse in 2004. Uh, but I'm going to rank so, and it's going to be an interesting read. Uh, it won't be a, a joyous read. It's going to be a lot of Alabama losses and a lot of Alabama heartbreak, but it'll set the tone, I think, for how much history Alabama can make Friday night against San Diego State. Alabama will be exercising a lot of demons with the win on Friday. And I think it's important that we put that into historical perspective. This is a rarefied air for the tide. Let me tell everybody about Built Bar. The Built March Madness bracket is here. We know you have a favorite Built Bar Puff, and now it's time to go make it count. You know I'll be voting for the Churro Puff because I love that mother. And He does. If you want uh, Alabama to win, then you'll be voting for that bar too. Support your team, support your bar, or your puff. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you'll be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built. Not only that, but one Locked On fan will get a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or puff delivered monthly straight to yo dough. you got to go try Built. Built, the best protein bar ever. Seriously, they're so amazing. You won't think they're good for you. What makes Built bars and puffs so good? Well, for starters, they're all high in protein, low in sugar, covered in 100% real chocolate. What else you need? That's awesome. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March. So hop in and support Yo Pick. Um, Jimmy, so... The, the 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 brackets are all messed up now. I mean, everybody's brackets are messed up. Um, but I feel – I'm, I'm going to tell you, I was in the car today. And, like, normally about this time, like, I remember, I think it was the early 90s when we played Arkansas in the Sweet 16. I want to say that game was in Charlotte. And it was, like, the next year, 92, Arkansas was going to be joining the SEC. So, that must have been 91. Right. And Arkansas beat us in Charlotte, and they started chanting SEC, SEC. And I was like, dang. You know, and I remember some other 
uh, Sweet 16 games. You know, the Providence game always comes to mind. And I'm, I've always felt like, okay, we're going we're gonna to blow it in the Sweet 16 because that's just what we do. I mean, I, I hate to use the term blow it because when you make it the Sweet 16, anything can happen. But I always feel like we're going to lose. Am I crazy to feel like – I know it, it seems stupid to say this because we're the number one overall seed. I really feel like we're the, we have the best shot at winning this thing. Like looking at all these other teams, I really feel like we're the best team. Now, I'm, if we don't win it, of course I'll be upset in the sense that I always want us to win. I won't consider this season a failure or anything, but I feel like we should legitimately be the favorite. Like I feel like we're the best team left. Yeah, it's much different. Uh, I, I think the best comp is just two years ago, Luke. Uh, two years ago, we're in this position in the sense that we're in the Sweet 16 just two seasons ago playing against a UCLA team, and Alabama was favored to win that game. If I remember right, it's crazy. I, I, my, my recollection is, and Luke can, can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Alabama was favored to beat UCLA in a Sweet 16 game and make the Elite Eight, but it still felt like those Vegas odds make don't know that we're out in these sweet 16 games. The, 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 the idea that we were actually going to beat UCLA didn't feel right to us Alabama fans, <laughs> or that's how I felt. And, and when Alabama ended up just short, uh, I, I, for one, wasn't surprised uh, at all, even though it was an overtime loss. Uh, this is, this is totally different. This just doesn't feel like, the traditional Alabama. I think Luke's 100% correct here. This feels like Alabama may be the best team in this tournament and that San Diego State uh, should be a substantial underdog to Alabama and uh, and that Alabama is going to be favored solidly over the Elite Eight opponent, be it Baylor, be it Creighton, be it Princeton. Uh, and, uh, that's just, it's so different. That's why I'm, I'm looking forward to putting together that, that piece this week to put into proper historical perspective, almost Cecil Hurt like, uh, in the sense that, Hey, before we embark on this sweet 16 Friday night matchup, let's look back over the past 40 years and see where we've been, uh, in these sweet 16s. And you'll see that exactly what Luke's point, this, this just feels different than Alabama's, uh, traditional uh sweet 16 heartbreak this feels more like uh san diego state better pack a lunch that's what it feels like yeah and uh in 90 of course we played loyola marymount now there's some people josh from birmingham being one of them that probably weren't alive in 1990 but i remember that really well when we lost to loyola marymount 62 to 60 i remember it because uh, brent musburger said y'all take a look at the shot clock because you won't be seeing it much tonight and we slowed them down. They were averaging about 120 points a game, for those who don't know. I mean, he they just shot it all the time. And um, we slowed it down to a crawl, uh, kind of like Maryland tried to do with us. I guess that just dawned on me how ironic that is. You know, I want to go back to this Maryland game for a second because one thing that, that jumped out to me, Maryland, I think they dug them their own grave with this whole – it was like they did a three-man weave for 20 seconds of the shot clock. And then they were like, okay, with about 10 seconds left in the shot clock, we're going to try and get into anything we can do. We're going to throw it into this, this Reese guy who is a beast. That guy, holy cow, that guy is strong. Now, he's awesome for the Big Ten where they are used to people elbowing everybody in the junk, knee, kneeing people in the throat, and, and they, everybody's like, this is what the Big Ten basketball is. And I think you're seeing when the, when the Big Ten gets into uh, – tournament play like this and you know you're Purdue and you're just used to banging everybody around and like everybody's like okay you can do all the banging you want to but they're going to call fouls in this tournament that's how it works and I think they called fouls on Maryland in this thing and you know again it, it just seems like it's worked out uh that way uh, the Big Ten is very physical and that's great but in the tournament I'm not sure it's a great thing um that's, that was my argument about Tennessee not going for in this tournament, by the way, and they're in the Sweet 16. But, uh, yeah, Maryland is like this little three-man weave at the top, and then they get in their offense, and they started doing that like at the very first of the game, and I was thinking, okay, I understand what they're doing right now. They're just trying to set the pace of the game. They kept doing it down like 15. <laughs> I was like, this is fine with me. Y'all don't understand. Y'all are behind. And that's what I told the guy sitting next to me. 
um, because I have no friends. I just had to talk to the guy next to me. I said, (laughs) I said, man, if we can ever get an eight point lead, this game is over. This game is over. They cannot come back. They don't have. It's not that they don't have the firepower. We don't know if they have the firepower because they never really tried to use the firepower. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agreed that once we got in, it felt uh, extremely comfortable. Yeah, Alabama struggled in the first half. I think some of it was kind of feeling out how healthy Brandon was and, and, and not feeling lost without Brandon Miller sort of as the, you know, the straw that stirs the drink. But it just kind of felt like when Brandon got going, Alabama did. Uh, even though I would I would identify Quinterly as the star of the game and not Brandon, but uh, it, it was kind of a slow start offensively, but a great second half, and we've seen Alabama do that a lot this season. Uh, impressive, good, solid, uh, well beyond solid win. Particularly when you look at you know there's a couple of number ones uh, that have lost, and and Alabama is not one of them. As a matter of fact, Alabama has won easily twice. Uh, I, I do think Friday could look different. I think when people hear San Diego State, they're going to think group of five, uh, mountain conference that, that's not strong, uh, probably not a great team. But, hey, San Diego State was a five going into this thing, Luke. That means that – still are the, five. Yeah, still – yeah, they're five. It's yeah, not like they got worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but to me, it's the committee telling the world – hey, this is a team with a top 20 resume, a top 20 resume. And, and a top 20 resume, that's a good team. Now throw in that they're obviously playing well. So this is a really good team with a top 20 resume that's playing well. Uh, so I think it's going to be a big, big challenge, particularly for our offense, because San Diego State is known for being elite defensively. And believe it or not, uh, I'm, I'm not the NCAA historian, but I do believe – that San Diego State has had uh, quite a bit of success in the NCAA tournament uh, versus an Alabama over the past 10 to 15 years. I mean, this, is, this isn't a, a rare trip to the NCAAs or even to the Sweet 16 for good West basketball program uh, playing in a metro area where they can sign kids. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a big challenge, a much bigger challenge, of course, than Corpus Christi or even Maryland. Let me tell everybody about FanDuel. The tournament is heating up, and now's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you want to check out Bama and San Diego State, which will probably be the late game on Friday. We don't know as of right now, but it should be. Because new customers get that no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to rebounds to threes drained, whatever you want. You can include for anything like spread, money line, total, you know, over-unders, whatever you want. Player props, player points, rebounds, assists, blocks, all that stuff. They got it all at FanDuel. FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at bigger payouts with same-game parlays. So don't miss this chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Okay, so let's talk about the tournament in general. Um, You know, obviously Purdue going out. I don't know if we've even talked since then. Um, That's a thing. I mean, look, Purdue and Matt Painter, it's one of those things where they win all these conference championships, win the conference tournaments and do all these things. And then they get in the the, the tournament and it's like they they sort of fall apart a little bit. I mean, and again, I think part of that is because – uh, they're used to pushing everybody around, and you know, you play a different style in the tournament. It gets called a little bit differently in the tournament. And next thing you know, um, I mean, you, your guys are fouling out. You're not, you're not being able to set the pace you want to set. Um, Houston moving on. I got to see some of that Houston Auburn game. Um, Auburn obviously dominated in the first half. And um, look, I think Bruce Pearl had a good plan in the first half. The problem is, it feels like they didn't make a ton of adjustments in the second half. And the other thing is. If you miss about 50% of your free throws when you shoot 36 of them, things probably aren't going to turn out very well for you. So <laughs> no. um, that was the other thing. Obviously, Kansas, Arkansas, I was glad to see Arkansas moved on. I picked them. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled to death that Arkansas is moving on. And, um, you know, Tennessee beating Duke. I mean, look, I didn't have ten- Tennessee winning that game, 
but uh, I was glad that they did. Yeah, what a statement for the SEC, particularly that game, because Tennessee, since the loss of their point guard, uh, had struggled. And Duke, since they got healthy, uh, had won like 11 in a row. And th this just had Duke win written all over it. But Tennessee, playing the same style of basketball that gave Alabama a ton of trouble up in Knoxville, uh, absolutely uh, shocked me by, by beating Duke. Uh, again, a, a team not playing well, beating the team who was playing well, uh, a team with a lot of tournament pedigree uh, losing to sort of the upstart, though Rick Barnes has a lot of NCAA tournament success. I'm telling us, Tennessee, if they had never lost Ziegler, uh, boy, they, they'd be a, a Final Four threat, in my opinion. But uh, as it is, uh, they're going to be a difficult out. I think, as a whole, the SEC has done really well. Uh, and, and as we record this, Kentucky's playing – uh, and, and so there could end up being four SEC teams in the Sweet 16. Uh, that'd be fine with me. I sort of like the idea. I think it helps everyone recruit. Nate Oates believes that, by the way, that when the league has success, it's easier to recruit to this league uh, because you're selling kids on, hey, you're, you know, you're playing against great uh, future NBA competition. Uh, so Nate, Nate, you know, he's, he says he, he roots for the other SEC teams for that reason. Uh, so, so we'll, we'll see, but, uh, man, what a great sports week at Alabama sweet 16 on Friday. And by the way, yesterday, great sports day for Alabama. The gymnastics team finished second in the SEC championships. Great, great performance. So that, that was awesome. Baseball team nearly won a series against on the road against the number two team in the country. Softball won its SEC opener against a really good Arkansas team. Uh, and, of course, the men's basketball team and what they did. The bummer was that the women lost in the first round. But, hey, what, terrible draw playing Baylor in round one. And they actually led at halftime. Uh, so I know it's a little frustrating, but that the women's basketball program is making progress, clearly. And uh, I'm eager to see what they might do uh, next season. All right, buddy. Going to cut it a little bit short. We got to run, but we will be back tomorrow to talk more about the Maryland game, get you ready for San Diego State, get you ready for some football stuff as spring practice is right here now. We'll definitely be talking that, but right now, spotlight on basketball, and we got to keep it there. So until tomorrow, roll tide, everybody. Roll tide.